Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Billy and Judson over here at Eastern Current. Welcome to another. Oh man, your camera's doing that funky thing again. I'm gonna. Oh, it has been a night of technical difficulties trying just, to bring out the show. Yeah, dude, it's gonna be good, man. I'm gonna switch it off. I'm gonna switch to my camera really quick here. There we go. Hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to episode five of Eastern Current. Judson, once again, awesome to be on another episode with you. Uh, just working super hard and super diligent to make this show happen. For sure. Um, yeah, a little technical difficulties, but here, let's see if we can fix it. Boom, Boom. there we go. There I am. I, Every, st I still exist. Yeah, everybody, wh what you think is happening is technical difficulties. We just want a reason to say, boom, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. I'm Billy Thorpe. This is Justin Brock. We're your host. This is episode five, talking about tarpon fishing uh, with Hansen Lau. It's going to be on with us. He's uh, Skyping in. So, anytime we do Skype, it uh, puts a little pressure on our Wi-Fi signal, so bear with us as we work through the, the tech stuff. Um, so to get started, let me just remind you, if you're watching, uh, just to be sure to, or if you're watching, yeah, definitely if you're watching live, uh, be sure to comment, interact with the show, ask any questions. We'll get to them as we can. And then from those comments and questions, we're going to be, um, we're going to be, I'm looking at this camera, this, my computer camera, and you'd be looking right here. We're going <laughs> to be picking a winner to win a, right here, what it, look at that thing. Oh. Oh, Judy Brock. Look at, I mean, it. this thing is solid. Like if you could see the, I don't, I don't know what kind of paint that is, but like a glitter shimmery paint. Oh, it's, it's shimmery. Beautiful. It's glittery. It's, it's super cool. We actually thought about not even giving it away, just hanging it up in the studio. Um, but Judy actually painted this just for the tarpon show. Isn't that right, Judson? She, she did. Yeah. She, uh, I told her that my buddy Hanson was coming on and we were talking tarpon fishing. And then the next morning she's like, Hey, I've got this painting for you. So. <laughs> super cool yeah, she knocked it out pretty quick awesome. it's it's real awesome absolutely man so yeah if you're if you're gonna comment uh you're gonna have a chance to win that we're gonna be in there so awesome thank you guys absolutely man well hey and tell us where you're watching from as well cool. yeah tell us where you're watching from um just uh super excited to be here like billy was saying we've got a really cool show hansen's a good buddy of mine excited to have him on here to be talking and uh, just a just a ton of knowledge really breaks things down really well and explains things really well. The time that I've spent on the boat with Hansen is I've learned a lot, and he's just a really fun guy to fish with. And um, just like I said, very very um, technical when it comes to fishing, which I really like. Um, also, just wanted to remind y'all we do have an online store, and we're we, we're doing this for fun, and, yeah. and we love doing it. But definitely helps with the the couple bills that we have to pay as far as the software. And the, the podcast hosting, which is another reminder, we've got a podcast now that you can listen to um, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, it's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's a little tricky sometimes to find on Spotify, I think, as it, as yeah, it keeps they're, registering. They're like going through like a beta test or something like that. Uh, yeah, I think. so, so uh, yeah. It, it should be easier to find on Spotify. You can find it, but you kind of really have to look for it. I know that sounds kind of yeah, funny. Yeah, so but. iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. Uh, I don't know, whatever the top five are on Google, that's what we put it on. So <laughs> we didn't work too Most of y'all probably listen on iTunes. Uh, so Podbean, you can definitely find one. it on iTunes. But but yeah, so yeah, check out our online store. It definitely helps if you buy a shirt or a hat or something like that Absolutely. to pay our, our few little bills that we've got going so we can bring out this show. Um, but yeah, yeah so appreciate it. we're going to jump into just kind of talking about we're doing this weekly fishing report. So uh, dude, what's happening out there, man? Oh man, it's uh Fourth of July just happened. It was it was crazy. There's lots of boats around, and then the weather, you know, the weather's just been kind of all over the place. I remember it did this last July, a lot of rain and clouds and just pop up thunderstorms out of nowhere. And so um I've been inshore all week and just redfish and flounder and trout and it's been good. It's it's been pretty consistent. I can't say it's gotten any worse or any better um from the past couple weeks. Um stuff's still going on offshore with the Mahi and tuna and and near shore, the, the Spanish mackerel and, and whatnot have been close to the beach. Guys have been catching bonita. So there's definitely plenty to be caught out there um, if, you, if you jump on the water around here in North Carolina, South Carolina. And that is our fishing report for the week. So I'm going to give it back yeah. to Billy for our sponsor shout-out. Sounds awesome, man. Well, yeah, I know you told me you messed up the redfish today, so that was good. Yeah, we, yes. oh, yeah we did catch the redfish pretty good today. This afternoon, this morning was tough. This if afternoon can, was pretty If I can good. stop laboring on this show for long enough, we're going to go one day. We're going to go <laughs> and catch some of those redfish. My father-in-law is totally looking forward to catching those on the fly with you, for uh, sure. by the way, as well. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do some sponsor shout-outs and then uh, get, get our CETO safety tip of the week coming up as well. And then we're going to announce our catch of the week. But once again, if you're liking, commenting, sharing, interacting with the show, you'll have a chance to win uh, that beautiful tarpon painting that Judy Brock did uh, right here. Yeah, check that out. 
show it to you again. And I'm telling you, it, it looks great on camera, but it looks way amazing in person. Yeah, it is and super so, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. So first of all, we got AFCO and Marshware. So we're going to be actually giving away um, one of their uh, shirts here for Catch of the Week. So yeah, awesome sun shirt there with a little hood on it, long sleeve. So we appreciate those guys. Got my Marshware gear on. My wife loves this shirt. She tries to steal it from me and hides it, so I have to go find it. <laughs> uh, we got Eastern Angling, Judson Brock sitting right here. Man, just a, a sponsor of the show. Uh, actually, I got these little logos down here all all messed up, but I don't know what happened to those guys. Uh, Thorpe Creative is my business. We do t-shirts, apparel, uh, online stores, order fulfillment, things like that. Uh, I Strike, you guys have seen them on the show just a couple episodes ago. Super generous, super you know supportive of the show, so we enjoy those guys. Uh, and go to their website for bulk pricing discounts. I'm still trying to decide what I want off of there because it's <laughs> such a, I mean, like up to 40% off is yeah, insane. Yeah, it's killer. All right, we got cool. so many good products too. Well, I will stop talking about that. It's talking about Cito tip of the week. Know how much fuel you have before you set out. Don't trust your fuel gauge. Judson, be honest. Have you ever went out on the boat, trusted your fuel gauge, and that was a mistake? I have run out of gas in the water twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's uh, it's definitely super annoying. My my big boat fuel gauge went out at the beginning of the summer, and oh, I always just top that off like every trip. At the end of every trip, I'll just go top it off. So I'm pretty safe there. So is it I like, have pushed is it, like it. Top it off like the the handle clicks, or top it off like you squirt uh, gas on your boot. Which one? What top it off do you have? I think there's uh, two. Let's just say the handle usually just clicks. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. I'm the overachiever, so I just like well, it spray me in the leg. In the oh, you want to dump it out the top? I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> just polluting the water. I got gotcha. you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. What am I? No, I'm just kidding. All right. So here we go. Let's do catch of the week. This is a little bit different. Judson picked this out. A little bit of bass here. Here we go. Catch of the week winner is. Anna, Anna Avant. Killing Anna it. You Avant. get the AFCO sun hoodie. Oh, let me pull it. Hold Women's on a second. Let me get hoodie. back to your camera there. Oh, you want to oh, show it? Oh, oh. Boom, right there you go. AFCO sun hoodie. Super stoked. Thank you. Look at this bass, man. That thing is giant. So we're talking it's a about fishing. Mouth. So, you know, historically, as historically as we can four shows ago, we were talking about saltwater fishing. Uh, but, man, we may have to do a bass episode. Look at that thing. Yeah, it'd be fun. I I, we just got at? that picture sent to us, and that is a stud. It, that is, man. That is a stud of a bass. That's awesome. So, yeah, man, that is it for sponsors. So, thank you to all of our sponsors out there. So, Anna, send us your address, and we will get this uh, this this sun hoodie to you. We'll get it sent out to you. Absolutely, man. Well, dude, let's get to the meat of the show. No further ado, Justin, I'm going to turn it over to you as you are good friends with Hansen and you know a ton about him. So, I'll let you introduce him here. What's up, guys? Uh, yeah, I'm super excited to have Hanson on the show tonight. He lives in Miami. Had the pleasure of fishing with him in Louisiana as well as down in uh, in the Everglades and in uh, Biscayne Bay for tarp and permit bonefish. We've had some awesome – I think pretty much every time we fish together, we've had a pretty epic fishing, so we need to keep that going. But, yeah, uh, let's bring Hanson on. He's a super cool dude. Ex excited to introduce you all to him. All right. Let's see if we can bring him on here. There he is. There is Hansen. He's uh, just going to unmute his microphone. I there we go. I think I got it. There we uh, go, man. You guys we hear me? Loud and gotcha, clear. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. Hey, guys. Hey, welcome to the show, Hansen. How are you doing, man? Thank you. Happy to be here. I am doing great. Right on. Well, Hansen, um, let's talk a little bit. Well, I, I always kind of open up with, with some questions, just kind of some basic get-to-know-you questions. And, and uh, we just wanted to kind of know, how did the whole fishing passion start for you? How, where did you fall in love with fishing? Yeah, good question. Um. I guess, like, um, you know, I went fishing with my parents when I was a kid. Uh, it wasn't anything technical. You know, we'd go to the dock, go snapper fishing, whatever. That's when we moved here to, to South Florida. Um, and my godparents had a house in the Keys, so, of course, we always spent a lot of time in Key Largo, fish off the back of the dock. And then I, I got into a lot of bass fishing. So, you know, I rode my bike around town catching bass and all that stuff. And, you know, bass fishing kind of translated well into light tackle, sport fishing, saltwater. So it all kind of worked out. Um, you know, I got really got into recording like all the TV shows like Walker Skate Chronicles and and, uh, you know, Sportsman's Journal, Sportsman's Adventures, all, all the all the great TV shows I grew up with. And it just inspired me to to just keep wanting to do this and keep wanting to fish. Uh, luckily, along the way, I picked up some really, you know, really, really good mentors. And uh, here I am. That's awesome. That's awesome. You work pretty closely with with a few of the companies in the industry that you've kind of, you've kind of tagged in with. Um, you want to share anything about those guys? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, I work with, uh, you know, very fortunate to be able to work with some great companies. Uh, you know, one of the companies I work with is uh, Cortland Lines. Uh, they make fly lines, braided fishing lines and all that stuff. And, um, you know, all my fishing I'm doing is with that stuff. I'm, I'm uh, involved in some of the R&D uh, for, you know, the fly lines and the braid and, and whatnot. So I know that stuff works because if it doesn't work, I send it back. And I'm like, you need to change this. They do it. They send it back. I test it. It works. You go, it goes through a rigorous process and finally it goes into production. Um, you know, so I work with uh, Maverick Boat Company. Uh, I have, this is, I think, I guess this is my fifth Maverick. Yeah, my fifth Maverick Boat Company product. Um, I've been loyal with the company for a while and uh, for a long time, over a decade. Um, my first one was a, was a 2006 that I bought used from, uh, from uh, one of the anglers on the Redfish Tour. And uh, from then on, I've, I've owned Mirages. I've owned every model Maverick Mirage, uh, except for the tunnel, uh, though I've fished on it a ton. Um, you know, and they're great boats. They're perfect for what I do here. Uh, currently own a Maverick HPX V17. It's a 2019 model. Great boat. And, um, you know, another company I've recently started working with is uh, Savage Gear. Uh, they make bunch of great fishing products, bunch of great fishing lures, uh, a lot of lures that are very realistic in the water, um, durable and whatnot. And, you know, I'm also heavy on their marketing and R and D side. So, you know, it's great to have an input on, on all these products that I get to use. Cause at the end of the day, I'm going to be using it. So I don't want to just market some product. I, I want the best. I right, want something right. I'm going to be able to use too. Um, so a number of great companies I work with, you know, RCI optics, they make some great shades, great glasses. Uh, I've been with them since their beginnings. Um, you know, a lot of great companies I work with. Yeah, uh, man, I saw their optics on, on uh, Instagram there. So really good, really good looking product, man. I, I went to their website and checked it out. So yeah. I have to snag a pair of those. Yeah, they're awesome. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, oh man. So, so on this show, Hans, and we have, uh, our, our, uh, like comments here live from Facebook. And so I, I got to read this comment cause I love it. So Lee Griffin says, Hey, where's the ICAST free passes? Oh <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that joke came around because before the show started, I was, uh, I saw Hanson's post on Facebook. Like he cannot get free passes or like, Hey, before you ask, like I can't get them. And then that was one of the first yeah. questions I asked. And then this person <laughs> asked it. So I'm it's, like, it's like, yeah. I wish I can help. Um, I've, been inundated with uh texts and messages and whatnot from people asking oh can you get me in the icast and you know I, i'm just attending on behalf of court and line I, I i really wish i can help and get you passes but i can't <laughs> there it is it's public now he cannot help you get passes guys if you're watching the show so awesome well i just want to do a couple shout outs to people watching really quick um so we got john uh, watching from Middle Sound, so right here just down the road from us. Uh, right Zach Kirby is watching uh, here in Wilmington. Daniel uh, Cliff. Cliff is a, a, a big fan of the show. He's watching from Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. Hey, we got somebody from Indiana watching, Wisconsin watching, South Carolina. Um, awesome. Somebody wants to know where we can catch some tarpon in North Carolina. We'll get to that in just a little while. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So I just wanted to say say he hello, hello, hello. I just want to say hello to everybody watching. That's my, that's my hello. Voice there. That's a good Southern voice. So anyway, let's get back into talking about tarpon fishing, um, and I'll let you. I'll let, turn it over to Judson here for sure. So, let uh, going back to kind of that first question. When did you? We're just gonna go ahead and jump into tarpon fishing here. When did you kind of start tarpon fishing? What was your first tarpon experience, and when did you kind of fall in love with it all? I think my first tarpon experience was actually in the back of my cousin's house. He lives up in North Miami Beach. And, uh, you know, we get back, we're cleaning these dolphin that we caught and we start throwing carcasses in the water. And next thing I know, these big giant silverfish are, are eating these carcasses, rolling around us and all that stuff. So, you know, you know, I'm fishing off the back. I caught like a little grunt or something. I put that on a hook, threw it out. One of these big giant silverfish ate it, flew through the air. <laughs> just about almost spooled me broke me off and i was like wow okay this is it this is cool i gotta do some more of that yeah that's awesome that's it's crazy that they'll eat a whole dolphin, dolphin carcass and they'll eat a tiny little fly too they're just cool creatures yeah um, they're really creatures like you know every every one i believe has a different personality you know every group has a different personality some are scavengers more than than active feeders more than migrators you know and whatnot they're 
it's it's just really cool. I think they also have like human like characteristics. What's the uh, what's the biggest tarpon you've landed on fly or or spin or bait or whatever? Biggest tarpon I've landed was on fly and uh, was in the Everglades. Um, that fish we taped out uh, the girth, the length, and we put it into BTT's formula, and it turned out to be 186 pounds. Oh God, my goodness, awesome. man! On a fly rod, that's good. Good for all the fly fishermen watching. Like we can do this <laughs> for sure, for yeah. sure. So, all right, one more kind of just backstory question about tarpon fishing. What's your most epic day of tarpon fishing? Most epic day of tarpon fishing. Um, most epic day of tarpon fishing. I do remember it because that was on my birthday. That's awesome. In 2010, and um, I fished with my mentor uh, Tim Mahaffey. Uh, and we fished back in the Everglades, and uh, you know we hooked what was it? We hooked 17 fish over 100 pounds and fed 23 fish that day. Golly! Goodness. And I think we grabbed 11 or something like that. It it was probably that was definitely and still is my best day of tarpon fishing ever. That was just amazing. And I believe it because you watching you fight a tarp and you freaking whoop their butt. I I could not. I could feed twenty three. I if I could if they all stayed hooked, I couldn't land that many. I can't beat them as quick as you do. It's very impressive to watch Hudson fight a fish. But um, well, let's jump into kind of just the meat of the show, talking about you know everything with tarp. And so the first kind of segment we were going to jump into is is kind of picking where to fish. Like when I'm not, I don't want your spots. I don't want any of that. But like when you're like <laughs> thinking about. You could drop. You can send us personally some GPS coordinates yeah, if you want to me and Billy. Say, but to be on the show, you have to donate your GPS <laughs> coordinates. Like that's a part of, uh, that's part of the agreement. I didn't tell you that up front, but <laughs> it's uh, yeah, there, there, there's a spot there in, in Conk Key. You could you could sit right there. There's a big white spot. You might get yelled at by a couple guys, but you know, <laughs> that's what we're heading there tomorrow morning. Oh, I'm going to get killed for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. What are you looking for? Like just in general, I'm not uh, talking about Florida, talking about anywhere. What, like how to tarpon move? What are you looking for? What are they looking for? Like kind of break that down for me. It's a pretty loaded question because, you know, it really depends on the time of year. You know, uh, some are cooler months. If you're fishing for, you know, your resident fish that move in and out of the Everglades, move in and out of the, the Keys back country. Uh, you know, you're basically fishing in basins. You're looking for about three to five to six feet of water. Um, you know, those tarpon are the ones that are most susceptible to, to catching on a fly rod, sight fishing. Um, you know, you're also looking for creek mouths sometimes. You know, creeks uh, dump out into the Everglades and all that stuff. Tarpon will congregate there. Um, and for there, you know, you're more productive plug fishing in, in that scenario. You can throw a dredge line, which is a sinking line. And a fly, but you're definitely you cover a lot more water throwing plugs and, and whatnot in, in that scenario. Um, you know, during the the spring when they migrate and they're coming down the ocean, uh, they're coming down the Gulf Coast. Um, you basically go and you find points and edges and whatnot. Um, you know, up and down the Keys, um, outside of Biscayne Bay or in the backcountry, and there, there's a certain etiquette to fishing all these spots. It's, it's something that you really do have to put in your time to learn. Um, but you, once you find these places where, you know, basically it, it's a place where, tar, where, where it slows down tarpon, either funnels them or slows them down. And that's where you kind of hold your position, and you maybe move in and out with the tide and whatnot, uh, but that's where you fish them with a fly rod and, um, you know, fish them with uh small tiny flies yeah well what about what would you say all right if you're going to go out and, and spin fish for tarpon how how does that change from the fly fishing aspect well spin fishing um it's a different dimension of fly fishing i mean when, when you're going and you're fishing for ocean side um the migrating fish it's it's really not that effective you know you could throw try to throw a crab on their cork it doesn't really work well i've had more fish deny it than anything um, you know, the best response I've actually, I've gotten trying that ocean side tarpon fishing with a spinning rod is, is throwing one of these things. This is a, 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 you know, big swim bait from Savage Gear. It's a pulse tail trout. And, um, I've had them eat it on the ocean side. It's the only thing I've actually had them eat on the ocean side and actually come tight with. That's um, awesome. I've tried other lures like, you know, big giant, um, you know, sluggo looking lures and all that stuff. And I, I have a difficult time hooking these fish, but with this, it's like, 100% hookup ratio. Um, but when you're talking about backcountry, um, on the, in, this, in these basins, uh, in this deeper water, in these creek miles, or even in these creeks where you find these tarpon rolling or laying up or whatnot, um, you're actually more effective with a spinning rod, I find. 
Um, and the same thing, I'm, I'm either, depending on the depth of the fish, um, one of these new lures that just came out being introduced, the ICAST from Savage Gear, this is a pulse tail mullet. And this, this kind of has that perfect sink rate uh, for tarpon fishing for when you're blind casting at rolling fish and whatnot. Um, another cool thing is the hookup ratio with this lure. You know, you, you once tarpon eat it, this single treble deploys, and this is all that's left in that fish. So even if you break off, this is all that's left in that fish, and this thing rusts out overnight. Um, so, you know, a whole bunch of different lures that work well. Sometimes they'll be feeding on shrimp. Like, say I'm fishing, you know, if I'm fishing some of the bridges and whatnot in the Keys or, or in Miami or something, and they're heavily feeding on shrimp, you know, I'd take one of these, you know, big shrimp lures, like this Savage Gear shrimp here, and I'll throw this, and, um, and I just kind of let it drift in the current. I think one important thing to remember when you're working all these different lures, whether it's the shrimp or the or a swim bait or whatnot, is to slow it down and a steady retrieve. Um, I find more times than not, just that steady retrieve is, is more effective than just, you know, twitching it and making it go all sorts of crazy. So... I mean, if you're fly fishing in these different basins and whatnot, in deeper water and all that, most of the time you'll be throwing a sinking line or an intermediate line. You have to get down to where the fish are. You have to get down to their level. So once you figure out where they are in that water column, that's when you decide, oh, I'm going to use a sink tip line or I'm going to use a, a full intermediate or even a full sink. And, and you know, your typical flies you throw up those fish are these big, just a big giant bait fish fly. It's just a big EP, big black EP fly. So... Um, you just want them to see it and feel it. You want them to see it. You know, you just want them. To sh you want to show them the fly. Sometimes I'll wrap lead on the fly to get it down quicker too. So it's it's just about showing the fish um, your presentation at their comfort level. And when you're talking, so I know a couple times during um, you know you sharing some information there about hooking up on the on the tarpon. You, you kind of yeah. said like, hey, I'll, I'll jump tarpon. Sometimes I'll hook them. Sometimes I won't. You know, for people listening or people like me who've never even had an opportunity to throw anything at a tarpon, I mean, what can yeah. we expect when 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 a tarpon, you know, gets a hold of your lure? Like, are we looking to, like, bass set the hook? I, I mean, what, what's well, kind of the strategy there for you? That's the fun part about plug fishing. You know, I, I love the fly fish, but plug fishing is really a whole dimension of fun. It's a lot of fun, especially when you're throwing these, these swim baits, these big, giant swim baits. They really attack it violently. And because you're just slow rolling it, it's you have a you have a constant feel, constant connection with that lure. So when they eat it, it's a big giant thud, and you're gonna want to hit them back hard. Okay. So yeah. when I when I fish them, I fish them with a rod that like a swim bait rod that has a slightly softer tip, but a whole lot of but a whole lot of stiffness in the butt section. That way I can drive that hook in because a lot of times you're you're basically you're you're uh, you're seeding that hook. You know, it's it's not a it's not a it's not a abrupt, um, it's not an abrupt connection with that hook because because sometimes when it's too abrupt, it bounces out of a hard part. So you want to seat the hook. So a, a slightly softer tip rod helps helps you do that. I've had someone explain it to me one time where like setting into a tarpon is almost like trying to set a hook into like a piece of wood. Like you kind of yeah. want to start it out easy and make sure it's purchased somewhere, and then you kind of finish with like you're saying that butt section strength of your rod, just kind of pulling bearing that hook in there and is that the yep. same with you know with the fly rod are you doing like a rip set on that thing is that kind of i'd say it's the same for, well you know, what do you think Hansel? i wouldn't rip set i you know i like to you know depending on what you're doing if you're ocean fishing uh we fish a lot of worm flies on the ocean and we do that two-handed strip just like your striper fishing and question i get a lot in the boat is, is what do i do when a fish eats you know when i'm two-hand stripping just keep stripping okay. just just I would the minute you see that fish open its mouth, what I found that if you just stop for a minute, give it a two count, and then just start just start your two hand strip again and come tight to that fish, you end up seating that hook a little bit better because you know with these with these flies you're throwing, you know you're, you're using a real small it's a it's a it thin you know profile hook and you don't need a whole lot of effort to set that hook into a fish. You just want to seat it, and the same thing when a fish eats that fly you want to grip your line tight and you want to come tight but you don't want to come up and trout set you want to point your rod at the fish and you want to use a line and strip strike the fish mm, okay yeah i got you yeah that, that that's good to hear it's uh it seems like too just tarpon fishing when you're feeding a fish near the surface it's so easy to whatever you're fishing pull it away from real quick because that bite's so visual and in your face and you oh, want to yeah. set the hook 
no matter what you're doing. And, and I like that two count. Just really let them eat it, go back down, close yep. their mouth. That's cool. Sometimes I'll wait for them to turn, you yeah. know. For sure. Yeah, how long do you feel like when you see a tarpon eat something like that, how long do you feel like they hold that fly in their mouth? Like how long could you get away with letting them, you know, swim with it for, before you strip into them? I think every fish is different. Yeah. But a lot of times with these little tiny flies, I've actually seen them eat the fly where my client does not even – didn't even see that, that, that that fish just barely cracked its lip and sipped that fly in. And it'll swim like 20 feet to the boat with that fly in its mouth still before they come tight to that fish. That's awesome. Um, but wow. then I've also seen them sip it and then, you know, spit it right back out. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you got any well, – oh, here we go. We got some questions coming in here live. So uh -huh. Jack Knott says, what pound line would you recommend for tarpon fishing? So that would be braid uh, and, and leader combo would be my guess. I think it really depends on uh, where you're fishing and um, – I and, think he's from you know, up here, so dirtier water. It'd be a little bit dirtier. Dirty water, water, deeper water, a lot of current maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I recommend at least 40, you know, 40, 50 pound braid. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, have a stout enough rod to be able to handle that fish because a fish in deeper water is going to sound. Yeah, it's going to get deep on you. Oh, yeah. How about leader? What would you recommend for leader on that? You know, I, I like using. Um, in that deeper water, I like using fluorocarbon because of the sink rate. Mm -hmm. um, Cortland actually makes a great fluorocarbon. It's the most abrasion-resistant fluorocarbon I've ever used. So I, you know, in dirtier water, you can get away with heavier fluorocarbon. So, heck, if you can get away with 100-pound fluorocarbon, use 100-pound. Uh, it's dirtier water. If you can get away with, you know, 80, go with 80. Um, I'd say go as heavy as you can. As heavy as you can. Now, what knot are you using to join that braid and the, uh, and the leader? If you're using big, big uh, size fluoro or mono like that. You know, I know a lot of people that, that like using that FG knot and it's great knot. I can't seem to get it tied right. I guess if you I'm can get you. it tied right and and not let it slip after multitudes of casts with the, with, the, with the knot going in and out of the guides, I'd say that knot would be great for you. But I, I've gone with the standard, you know, uh, doubled over the braid and I go with a uni to uni. Like two turns or three turns on the heavier on the heavier leader and then six turns on the braid, and that that has been reliable for me. It's it's a quick fix. If you break off, you could tie, you could retie quick, and it's strong. And typically, I'm guessing with that, you're probably going to want to not reel into your rod tip because you're you're not still going to be pretty large on that. Yeah, you're you're you know that's why like, a lot of rods I like using have you know slightly bigger guides. Sometimes yeah. you're going to need to reel into your rod tip, or you do have an accident. Um, you, of course, you try not to as much as possible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We had one more question up here I'm going to jump on. It says, uh, how would you recommend catching tarpon at night from the beach or inlet when they're busting on top? When they're busting on top, um, you're typically feeding on crabs or shrimp, uh, probably crustaceans when they're busting on top. That, that would be my guess. I, I don't do a lot of night fishing, so yeah. this is just you know a little bit of limited experience I've had. Uh, whether they're busting on top or just laying in the shadow line, I – fine throwing like a, a plastic shrimp like this and yeah. throwing it you know into the current and and not bringing it up current not bringing it down current but more so you know having a sweet perpendicular to that current i think that's been you know best success rate for me for sure for sure i like that mm -hmm. i like that do you have you seen any more questions popping up billy that you want to jump into uh no i think you you got them all so if you guys are watching uh just be sure if you have any questions uh just leave them uh, on the comments here we'll get to them and also that uh, increases your chances of winning my random pick for, <laughs> for <laughs> another prize for the tarpon picture so make sure you are are doing that so absolutely justin well i'll pass it back to you man you guys are going i'm just learning a ton i always when get your notepad these, out when we do these shows i'm like i feel like i'm watching a youtube video sometimes and i'm like oh wait i'm co-hosting a show i gotta be a part of this <laughs> thing but you guys are crushing it so i'm gonna let you keep going i, I want to get my notepad out too um, so terms I hear a lot of times, like from, from some of my buddies at Tarpon Fish is like they're creatures of habit and they're victims of the tide. Like I wanted to just see kind of what your opinion was and, and how that played into your thoughts about Tarpon. Creatures of habit. They, they certainly are creatures of habit. And to add to that, they also learn quickly. Um, I think, uh, you know, they, when they eat that worm fly, they, it, it's programmed in their heads when they eat a polar worm you know, a polo worm during the polo worm hatch down here in spring, program in their head. So you can throw a polo worm like throughout the entire course of the year um, on the ocean side. You can actually get them to eat it. 
um, just based on reaction. You know, they're they're creatures of habit. They're creatures of reaction. They they you know when you're when they're swimming down the ocean, migrating, they're they're not really actively looking to feed. It's more of a reaction bite when you throw like a, a little shrimp fly or something like that in front of them. Right. Um, you know, as far as victims of tide, um, I have not heard that expression, but I I would go on to guess a uh, victim of the tide where, you know, they're in certain places at a certain tide. It does play a big role in where I fish. Um, I'll plan my day not so much around the weather, but more so around the tide. Um, you know, especially in the back country, that holds true. Uh, we we uh, we did a lot of research. Um, was Sam, my buddy Sam, and I did a little bit of research, and more so on Sam's side. He just got a new boat, and we put a Simrad um, Evil Twelve uh, unit on there, and we put that that. Uh, three-in-one active imaging transducer with the side scan and we're you know able to just kind of keep tabs on on where the fish are you know on the tide and where are they gathering and all that stuff and we found some pretty interesting things you know about how tarpon move in and out of creeks and and uh and beach sides and and basins and whatnot with the tide that's super cool yeah, yeah. i, I Adam's always said that to me, Adam De Bruin. He's always been like, yeah, they're victims yep. of the tide. You know, they're going to let the, they're lazy. They're going to get pushed into this basin with the tide and they're going to fall out and they're going to, you know, get yep. kind of go this way with the tide. And so that's kind of cool. And that's something he'd always talked to me about with when, when I was kind of picking his brain about red fishing Louisiana, he's like, these fish are, they're lazy. They're going to let the tide take them places and, and it's going to take yeah. the bait places. And I, I guess that just kind of plays true in a lot of fish that are, that are making large moves like tarpon or, or big bull red fish. And, and whatnot so yeah yeah i mean where i like the tarpon fish um tide is again very important because it also you know may dirty up you know a strong tide coming from a certain direction uh may dirty up the water in a certain part you know of this spot or this basin and whatnot and that's where you'll have better success feeding a fish you know it is over in that slightly dirtier water caused by you know current moving a certain direction um, another thing is, you know, tarpon, when you're tarpon fishing, you're, it's a, it's a very finesse presentation a lot of times. And if you can sweep a fly in the current or use the current to your advantage to sweep a fly or a bait or a lure, um, into a fish, um, naturally you, your success rate really increases the more you have more chances that they'd bite it. You know, when I, whenever I, I fish for tarpon, if I'm fishing a high current area, you know, I try to set up my anger all the time to, to strip the fly where it's actually either sweeping into the fish. So if to say the tide's moving, um, um, you know, left to left to right across the fish's face, I'll have them throw the fly on the left side. So when the fish is coming and it intercepts the fish, it intercepts them with the with the fly, you know, sweeping down current in natural fashion. So, yeah, I mean, tide, current, it, it, it really – it's really dictates uh, what you're doing when you're tarpon fishing. Awesome. It's a big factor. And, and so jumping in a little bit into uh, as far as like presentation, like casting to fish. So I watched a video, one of your YouTube videos, just trying to get, you know, a little more familiar with, with what you're doing and how you're fishing and, and those types of yeah. things. Um, so talk a little bit, you know, and we kind of compared redfish there just for a brief second. Yeah. Um, and I know I learned on one episode before, you know, a previous episode that when you're red fishing, they're kind of, you know, in a herd or whatever, if you will, and you're kind of picking those off the, you know, the front or the sides. Is that the same for tarpon when you're, when you're picking a fish I, and I saw a video of you doing that. So can you dive into that a little bit as far as, yeah, you know, because presentation's great, but it's like, if I got, if they're schooled up, like who am I going after is my question. Um, it, really does depend it depends what formation they're taking i mean if they're you know in a daisy chain which a daisy chain is a bunch of tarpon just basically twirling around the circle um you you don't want to throw your lure or fly where it's coming at the fish and attacking the fish you want to throw where it's you know if, if it's going this way you want to throw on this side and and you know bring it where it's going away from the fish um when it's just a whole herd of fish um, especially in dirty water that I'd say just throw right through them, throw right past them, bring the whole, bring the lure through them. Okay. So bring it right through them. All right. Yeah. That's in awesome. dirtier water, they seem to be a lot more aggressive. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Cool. That's what we see here too. It's like it, 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 the times I fish in Florida, you want to pick that fish. You want to swing it in, you know, really match the pace of that fish. And when I fish for them further North, it's like, you know, you just kind of get it in that school and somebody's going to drop below it and come up and probably try to grab it. 
And that brings me to our next question on Facebook is how far north can you fish for tarpon? I, I know when I talked to Hanson, you, you kind of hang out in the Florida area, but Judson, maybe you could talk a little bit about this too. Or, yeah, for sure. Maybe I, both I was, of you know, actually. I was looking on here and it looked like somebody kind of answered it. But yeah, so they go all the way up into the Chesapeake Bay. I know there's guys that fish for them and, and all the way up to in, in, in the Chesapeake Bay. And there's this island, like Zach was saying, it's called Fisherman's Island on the north side of the Bay Bridge Tunnel, and, and guys have some sight fishing opportunities for tarpon there in some shallower water. So they're the same creature, like Hanson would say this too, that they don't change because they've left one state to the next state. You know, yeah. They're going to do the same things. They're going to swim the same patterns and, and eat the same things. And, and I think they probably would eat better for the further up they get because they're getting a lot less pressure. So Yeah, that, that's pretty true, I guess. And I see a lot of guys here and – Guys and gals catch them off of piers, like especially up in the Outer Banks. Yeah, and definitely. Like that, so definitely, there we've got them in North Carolina. There, uh, it seems like a lot of guys in Virginia right now are catching them pretty good. They've kind of pushed out of where you are now, haven't they, Hanson? For the most part. Yeah, most of them. Most of the migrating fish have pushed out. We've got some residents that still stick around year round, but uh, most of the migrating fish have already pushed north. You know, um, a lot of my buddies up in the Appalachia area and and Panhandle and whatnot are fishing them now on the Gulf side. You know, from from Tampa north. Um, and then on the East coast, uh, like my buddy Willie, you know, on his, in his neck of the woods, they're fishing them now, uh, from like, uh, you know, I'd say from Fort Pierce North and I mean, Stewart Fort Pierce North. I think a, a lot of people are fishing those fish now. Yeah. That's what's so cool about these fish is, I mean, mm. I could have been down there in Florida this spring throwing at some fish and I might be able to throw at the same fish in North Carolina, you know? It's, mm-hmm. uh, they, it's cool that they, they, they travel like that. So they'll move. How far across the Gulf do they move? Like up into Texas? Do you know how far they travel that way? I don't really know, but I've heard that they've even moved all the way to Mexico. That's awesome. Back. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, somebody here said in South Texas they got some tarpon I guess they fish for. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, that, the migrators definitely moved through there, and they moved through Louisiana. They moved through Texas. They moved through Alabama and whatnot. It's the same fish that come through Florida. Now, now, do you see a big size difference between the you know your resident fish and your migrating fish? You see a big difference in that when the season's in. Uh, you're you're gonna have big fish in the migrating fish as well. Uh, but majority of our resident fish in the in the cooler months seem to be a bigger breeder females, and then the warmer months, um, they seem to be like these like you know twenty to forty pound teenagers that are around. <laughs> gotcha. Rambunctious. Awesome, mm-hmm. So another good question that's popped up when, if you're like sight fishing to a tarp and whether it's a fly or spinning rod, like how close is too close? Like, where do you want to land yeah, it? Like question, where, yeah. like as far as presentation, what's going to spook the fish? Um, it depends on the fish and it depends on where you're fishing. Uh, the clearer the water, the more finesse your presentation. If you have current, that's a great place that you can make your most finesse presentation because like I said, you could throw the fly up current, let it sweep down to the fish or your lure, let it sweep down to the fish. Um, you definitely don't want to hit that fish in the head. And the calmer the weather, if you're fishing them in clear water, the longer the leads that you want as well. Um, So it really does depend on the conditions. Um, When you're fishing rolling fish, like say in the backcountry where fish are just coming up the bloop and coming straight down or, or, you know, or laying back up after they, after they roll, uh, then you want to throw close, but you don't want to land on top of where they, where they just rolled. You want to throw just a little bit beyond there and kind of just bring it through where they just rolled. Gotcha. 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 So, um, as far as that, that's a good kind of lead into this other question I wanted to ask talking about like the difference between laid up fish and, and, you know, cruising, swimming fish and how that affects your presentation. Um, and kind of explain what that is. What is a laid up fish? What is this like a, a swimming fish? How does that differ in your, your tarpon fishing scenarios? Yeah. So a laid up fish is basically, um, uh, a fish that's hovering, whether there's current or not, they're just, they're hovering still, they're sitting in the, in, they're sitting in one place. If there's very little current, um, it's very hard to feed that fish because then you have to drop your fly really close to that fish. In dirtier water, you'd be more successful. In a little bit cleaner water, of course, you've got to find those areas with a lot of current to be able to sweep your fly in so that they don't see your fly hit the water. Um, cruising fish, um, you know, rule of thumb when you're fishing cruising fish, I mean, these are just fish that are moving, you know, moving from point A to point B uh, or they're continuing on. And uh, I think rule of thumb is that if that fish sees the fly hit the water, it's game over. So you're going to want to be able to throw that fly um, ahead enough of that fish and give it just enough of a lead where when they get to it, it's already in the water, it's already moving away from, it's already in the right place. Um, If you're fishing like a big school of fish, you know, a big string of tarpon, that's a little bit different. 
first fish passes, you can throw the second, you can throw the third. As long as you're throwing something like a, you know, like a clear, like a clear fly line, you know, Cortland makes that clear fly line and liquid crystal. And with that line, you could basically throw it over some of these fish and bring it through the entire school without spooking them. And that way you can show it to one fish, two fish, three fish, however many there is that you can bring it across in school. That's cool. That's super cool. Um, yeah, that's, I remember Adam, Adam, you know, was one of the ones who taught me a lot about tarpon fishing and he was always saying, you know, let that fish feel like he found the fly. Cause I yep. feel like I'd try to rush it in there too quick and, or, the, or whatever you're throwing to him and it would spook the crap out of him and letting him really feel like they just kind of stumbled upon it. Just swimming. I feel like it's a, is, is huge. And like what you're explaining. Mm-hmm. Well, let's kind of jump into, and I know you love this like I do, but like kind of the gear, the tackle, the baits, all that rods and everything. So the first uh, question is, uh, like fly and spin setups. Let's talk about like, first let's go fly rod. What do you like to throw for tarpon? You know, just maybe just pick your favorite, favorite setup and then do the same with spin. Yeah, spin gear. Uh, definitely. Um, well, I mean, I have something here. Sweet. Um, That's what I'm talking you about. want, you want a large Arbor reel. You Are know, you pulling first, all this stuff out of like a, a little hat or something? You just keep pulling it straight out of the same place. Yeah. I've, got, I've got a little hidden compartment right here where I hide everything. <laughs> it's I like easy it. to get to. But, you know, first and foremost, you, you want a, a strong reel. You, you want a reel that's built to handle a lot of stress because you're going to be putting a lot of stress with a big fish. Fish is over 100 pounds, 200 pounds even in some places, and it's going to be pulling on. This is the winch you're winching that fish in with. So you want a reel that's sturdy. You also want a, a large arbor, you know, because when you hook a fish, a lot of times from a boat, you're chasing down that fish. Uh, you want to be able to pick up line as fast as possible and get it back on the reel because you're when you're – you know, you're, you're not really pulling on a fish or fighting a fish until you have the fat part of that fly line in your hand. So you need to get there first, and this will help you get there quicker. Um, so, you know, next piece of it is uh, your fly line. You know, this is a, a Cortland clear line. It's what I use most of the year for tarpon fishing. Um, Cortland also makes, uh, you know, colored lines like the like the all-purpose saltwater and the tarpon taper and all that stuff. But for most of my tarpon fishing, especially on the ocean, I'm using this this clear line. Um, and this is an 11 weight setup. I find, uh, I used to use 12 weights, uh, but I've, I've downsized to 11 weights because I found that over the years, tarpon have gotten a little more, uh, finicky, you know, they, they require a much more, um, a much more tactical approach, uh, and a more technical presentation. So an 11 weight is, a, it's, a, it's lighter than a 12 and allows you to, to make that more technical presentation a little bit easier. This happens to be a, a two-piece Scott Meridian. It's, it's just a great casting rod. It's got a lot of power in the butt section. Um, it's got you know a soft tip, so if, if I need to roll over a fly, a short-distance cast, I can do so. But it's also got enough midsection that I can punch that, punch that line through the wind because a lot of times when you're tarpon fishing, um, you're fishing in a lot of wind. Um, this is, a, like I said, this is an 11-weight setup. If it's, you know... I say 99% of the time I'm tarpon fishing, I'm using this. Um, when uh, when it's slick calm and it's, and it, and there's not a you know not a breath of wind in the air, then I'll use the same rod but downsize to a 10 weight. Same setup, just a 10 weight. Um, you know, as far as your leaders go, you know this leader is basically it's an IGFA leader, of course. It's got your you got a butt section, a midsection, um, you know, a little bimini twist here to add strength. Um, to your class tippet this is like a 16 pound class tippet and this is um, about a 50 pound uh, bite tippet right here and then of course your fly you've got just a little tiny bug um mm-hmm. and that kind of wraps up you know what you need as far as fly fishing goes uh, as far as spin fishing goes and, and talking about fly fishing really quick because i know this mm-hmm. is you know because I'm, I'm a a mountain guy I came from the mountains of tennessee mm-hmm. so um, probably don't, you know, I put backing on there just because I can, not because I'm ever <laughs> yeah. going to need it, but talk a little bit about that as far as, you know, how much backing and, and stuff like, cause, cause from what you just said, you're hooking up on that fish and then I'm assuming you're either turning, you know, turning some kind of power on either your trolling yep. motor or your motor and you're chasing that thing down while you're trying to get into your main line. Um, so yeah, talk about the backing a little bit and what you can, you know, what you need, just things like that. Yeah. I left out that part actually. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, so Another thing that's important is you, is you want at least 250 yards of backing. Okay. I mean, you rarely ever will get down 200 yards. You rarely get down 100 yards, but it does happen. It does happen. I'm, I mean, one time I had, um, I was fishing with a buddy of mine, and it was the end of the season. We usually get together and we fish like one of these last days toward the end of the migrating season, and hooked a big fish that ended up running me through several docks. 
And it not just it, it didn't just run through the dock, it zigzagged through the pilings. <laughs> so it was blown about 15. My boat's getting beat up against the pilings. I'm trespassing on somebody's dock, trying to weave this rod through there. And meanwhile, the fish is still running, and I'm toward the end of my reel. And actually, that fish spooled me. It spooled 300 yards oh, of line off yeah. that reel. But luckily, it's bright orange backing. We eventually found it, reattached it to the reel, and I said, you know what? I'm not going to go any further with this, and I broke the fish off. But, oh you know, gosh, having awesome. a lot of backing is important because things happen when you tarpon fish. Man, that is great. You should just handline that thing. It no. <laughs> <laughs> 300 yards handlined it, and that'd be fun. Put the glove yeah. on and just Cuban style. So yeah. Jeremy Alderman said that his favorite setup for a tarpon was a shorty AR 300 BLK. What do you have to say about that? That's Jeremy. <laughs> that's Jeremy for you. I, I, there's nothing I can say, but that's – that's that's my boy Jeremy. In fact, uh, that picture you used, um, the other guy that was in that picture uh, with when we were holding that big fish, that 186, uh -huh. that that that's Jeremy. Oh, right on. That's awesome. Oh wow, yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. That's awesome. All right, so let's jump into the like your spin setup. What what are you gonna um, be fishing if you take a spin rod out to go catch tarpon? Yeah, um, I use typically like about a you know a spinning reel that'll hold three to four hundred yards of line braid. Okay. Um, you know, I've been using uh, a lot of those, um, those Daiwa BGs. It's a great bang for the buck. Yeah. Uh, the BG, um, which size is it right now that I'm using the, uh, the 50 and the 60 have been really good for, um, no, no, it's not 50 and 60. It's a uh, 5,000, 6,000 sizes. I've been real good for, you know, throwing the bigger swim baits and whatnot. Um, and uh, for you know, for your smaller tarpon in the late summer, when you're throwing smaller lures and whatnot, I'm using just like a, a 4,000, which is a 5,000 size, um, and like 20 pound braid. Um, but another fun thing I've been getting into is, of course, swim bait fishing. And with swim bait fishing, you have swim bait rods. This is again, this is a Savage Gear browser rod. It's a great bang for the buck. It's a, um, it's actually designed for swim baits. It's got that softer tip that I mentioned earlier with a, a lot of butt section, and I have a 300 size uh shimano Corrado on this one nice. with a uh, 40 pound braid and this has actually been my, my favorite setup for throwing plugs at tarpon if you can throw a bait caster you can cast a plug rod this is a lot of fun have you have you gotten some to the boat on the bait caster i have i've gotten a, i've caught a lot actually caught a lot um, on the bait caster. yeah this earlier this year um we, we caught i caught a, a 160 on a on a, a plug rod that's awesome that's super cool. Yep. That's cool i've got i got myself a bait caster set up to throw the tarpon i have not done it yet but it, it's a lot of it, fun. It'd be well, fun. Come on down next year. Let's do it. I know, man. I need to. I, I, no, no more slacking. All right. So <laughs> hey, uh, let's let's. You got any questions yeah, there, Billy? We got Tony, any coming in? Yeah. So Jack Knott asked uh, for Muddy Water. What leader length do you want and rod length? Um, for Muddy Water, I mean, length. You know, as far as rod length goes, the longer the rod, the more you know. Basically, the more um, more leverage you have on the fish. That, this is why, you know, one of the reasons why I can land the fish faster on a fly rod, nine feet long. Um, you know, so I typically use an eight-foot rod, you know, seven and a half to eight-foot rod for, for tarpon fishing. Okay. Awesome. Gotcha. And so, then, and then, oh, oh. Sorry, dude. And Tony just wants to know, how do you get those big uh, fish fighting muscles? Tony Lara. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of my best friends. Uh, we, um... Well, you just pull on a fish. I mean, it's really that, – that's actually <laughs> kind of important. It's kind of relevant because, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, I'll see people hook a tarpon and they basically just limp wrist the fish and oh, fish yeah. is running all over the place. And you have a 70-pound fish that takes an hour to catch. And um, that, that's not healthy for the fish. It's not healthy for you neither because now both of y'all are building lactic acid and, um, you know, that fish has a smaller chance of survival. So, you know, it's important to, to, to be, to use tackle heavy enough to be able to really pull on a fish and just don't be afraid to pull. You can catch a lot of big fish on, on really light line. I mean, that, that 186 I caught was on 20 pound class tippet. Wow. You know, I've seen some big fish caught on 16 pound class tippet. Yeah. Um, so don't be afraid to pull on a fish. It's real important. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That, that question went from, funny to really relevant i appreciate you bringing <laughs> yeah that, that was and, awesome and then, and then jeremy all the yeah, time yeah jeremy alderman says most people can't fight tarpon well we won't discuss that because you guys are guides and make a living but <laughs> <laughs> what what would you say the biggest mistake is all right the top three biggest mistakes when tarpon fishing like the clients make or newbies yeah, that's make a good question yeah 
Top we're fighting three. casting you know top three mistakes trout setting trout setting that's a good okay. one that's, that's a that's a huge mistake i see it a lot and i get it you know even seasoned tarpon fishermen will do it from time to time it just happens you know sometimes it's a it's a it's a, um, a, a bite that catches you off guard and your immediate reaction is to freak out um so i think that's number one that's the one thing i've seen most uh I think the second big thing I've seen is when it's calm and people are casting, they're throwing their weight around the boat and setting off a pressure wake. Mm. Um, that I think that's that's big, big there. Um, and the third thing is just not fighting a fish uh, the way you're supposed to, not pulling on a fish hard enough. Yeah, I like it. And and what's the what's the correct angle? What's the correct way to fight and pull on a fish? Hard to explain, you know, through words. I feel like it's better yeah. to show. But if you had to explain it through words, what would you say? Um, if I had to explain it through words, um, like if I'm fighting a fish, whether it be on a spinning rod or or a, or a uh, fly rod or whatever, you, you kind of have to read the fish, read, kind of predict what they're gonna do. So a tarpon will, will will fight will fight you where it'll wag the tail, it'll wag 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 glide right, and toward the end of that tail kick. When they're about to glide, that's when you should you can really lock down on a fish. So if you have, if you're fly fishing, you can pinch the, the fly line against the cork and put a lot of pressure and really, you know, almost point the rod at the fish and, and pull that fish backwards. You know, with a plug rod, a, a bait cast, you you know, you can thumb your reel. With a spinning rod, you can kind of palm the spool to add that extra pressure. And at that point, that's when you can go from six pounds of pressure on your drag to, you know, twelve pounds of pressure and, and really turn a fish and confuse it and get it to you know land it quicker awesome 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 yeah it's good it, it, it sounds like it's you know good information for um you know not only tarpon but any really big game fish like yeah trying definitely. to trying to slow one it's down and get one in there yeah that it's a good. lot of technique involved yeah sitting there with your rod tip straight up in the air and and, and bending the tip is not going to be what's going to beat a big fish you yeah, know i guess no, with tarpon is like that won't you, do anything exactly so with tarpon is it fair to say that you want to keep those things i mean because they're jumping out of the air and trying to throw that hook so you want to keep it yeah. kind of low and steady and and uh, yeah you do you do and, yeah. and you know when the tarpon jumps it's you know you heard the overly used phrase uh, bow to the king it's, it's true you, you bow to a fish um but you know you bow to a fish it's simple just, just point the rod at the fish that's all you have to do, just point the rod at the fish um, I see, you know, it's funny. I've seen a lot of really exaggerated bows where people are like almost jumping out of the boat and like <laughs> leaning and doing like a surfer stance when they're, when they're trying to bow to a fish. It's pretty funny. You really don't need to do all that. Just, just point the rod at the fish. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. Fair enough. Right on, right on. Well, the last little section of questions I wanted to talk about was just kind of weather and conditions. So what, what is your favorite conditions for tarpon fishing? Uh, my favorite conditions, um, it depends on the time of year. Um, I'd say if I'm fishing residents, laid up fish and, and basin fish, I'd like it to be r really calm, really sunny. Um, being sunny really, really does make a difference because you're sight fishing at that point and you need to see that fish. So even though that fish is six feet long, having a little bit of sun will allow you to see it from a farther distance away and see which way it's, you know, which way it's looking. So now you know where to throw your fly, your plug, or your lure. Um, you know, during migrating season in the spring, when the fish are coming through the ocean side, I actually like wind. I want it to blow 10 to 15. A, a 12 knot wind is probably the per 12 knot wind uh, out of the southeast or east with, um, you know, bright blue sky. That's probably the best conditions to, to be able to, um, you know, for ocean tarpon fishing. Of course, you rarely get the perfect conditions, but if I if I can control the weather, that's what I would get. And if you're in the summertime and you're fishing, uh, you know, fish that are rolling in basins or in or in creek mouths and whatnot, you actually want that overcast day. You want a calmer day, but you want an overcast day. They're just gonna bite a little bit better in that overcast. They they stick around longer. I can I kind of feel like when when it gets too hot, sometimes they just kind of move up a creek or or sit or squat down deep or something like that. But yeah. you know when when there's when it's calm, there's less oxygen in the air, so they of course they'll roll more. And when it's overcast, the water's you know it's kind of a little bit cooler, so the fish just kind of stay up higher. Here's a question that that's just coming from my own mindset and areas where I've fished tarpon in, in the past, like. How, how affected are they by boats, like boat traffic? Like if you're sitting in a big wide creek mouth and you've got fish in there rolling and whatnot and a boat, uh, a boat rolls through, how, how much does that affect a tarpon, do you feel like? It does affect them. I've, I've seen 
you know, I've I've been in a scenario where I'm, you know, I've come off plane real early, um, you know, real far away from a creek mouth, and I'm, you know, slowly pulling toward a creek mouth where I know some fish are kind of laid up and, and sitting and rolling and happy. And then I'll have someone else who's snook fishing or something kind of go around me and roll right into that creek mouth or something. And you can, you can, you can watch these fish just wake away and just leave. Yeah. So it, it does affect it, you know, and, and sometimes you can't do anything about it. A lot of people just don't know any better. Right. right. Um, but, but it happens. And of course, you know, in the keys you have designated spots, etiquette plays a big role, you know, certain spots or two boat spots or four boat spots. It's important to give these fish enough time between boats to kind of chill out. So the next guy can get a fair shot. Right. And another thing is when a fish is past your boat, say, say you have two other boats behind you, you're on the ocean side, you're in the basin somewhere where, where fish are migrating through the fish is past you, you know, you have no shot and there's two other boats behind you. Don't throw behind the fish and spook it, you know, let the guy behind you have a shot. You know, right, it's just, right. it's etiquette. How far, if you're setting up, you know, and there's other boats out there, just a general rule of thumb, how far is far enough, you know, to set up from someone else? It really depends on how that particular spot is set up. Um, you know, there's no official written rule book, but a lot of us guides in the Keys basically know the rules. You know, in this basin, it's a three-boat spot. In that place, it's a four-boat spot, this and that. I think, uh, you know, you know, a lot of times if you, you know, just kind of put your hand in the sea where, you know, where your fingers are one inch apart, and if that boat basically um, – if, if that boat is, uh, if you can't fit that boat in, in that little gap, he's way too close. Gotcha. That's, see, that's a good rule of thumb right there. I like yeah, that. That's good. Never heard that. That's cool. Yeah. When I was watching one of your, uh, one of your videos there on YouTube, I, I saw in that you guys mentioned that I can't remember exactly who you're fishing with, but, um, especially down in your area, like a lot of etiquette, uh, even like there's, I think there was some area down there that you guys mentioned was like, this is just for fly fishing, like no spin bait, like nothing, nothing else, just a fly fishing area. So it's just kind of frowned upon, you know, yeah. because you know that, you know, spin fishing is not going to be effective in that particular area. So, you know, there's other areas that you can do that at, you know, you can, if you want to throw crabs, you can go fish them at a bridge and, and be more effective. Um, but you know, you're basically going to end up spooking a lot of fish. If you're throwing a giant crab sitting in a line with the rest of fly fishermen on the ocean side in the spring. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Well, man, it's been great to, to have you on the show. I don't know if we have any more questions, um, it's been fun. in mm-hmm. our, in our uh, comments here. So if you guys that are watching have any more questions, uh, if you're listening on our podcast and you, you want to answer or ask questions, just leave a comment, uh, do that type of thing. And so, so let's talk a little bit just about your business. I know, you know, you're not huge into self-promotion, but we talked a little bit last night, um, mm-hmm. as we were testing and, and you really said, as far as your guiding business, um, you, you know, you kind of have a, and I really like what you do because you're telling mm-hmm. me and you can kind of emphasize a little bit more, but you don't necessarily bring on a ton of clients, but the clients you do bring on and you do fish with you, it's more of that relationship year after year. So you can really teach them the art of, of tarpon fishing. So I want to give our viewers, you know, an opportunity to, to reach out to you or, you know, if they're making their way down there to, you know, to book a trip with you, if it's possible, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how they could get in touch with you or, or if that's something that you even, you know, want to pursue or give us a little more insight about your business? Yeah. I mean, you can certainly get in touch with me. Um, you know, via Facebook or Instagram or whatnot, I, 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 you know, definitely can take, uh, I definitely take more business. Uh, but you know, I'm a part-time fishing guide throughout the year. I guide more during the spring for tarpon. I take a little bit time off my regular job and, and my other nine to fiver in it. And, uh, I guide, you know, and I guide more in the springtime. Uh, so of course my days are going to be limited. Um, but yeah, I, I typically, I, I, you know, I like going through referrals through my buddies, you know, overflow, and whatnot okay absolutely man well that's uh, that's good to know i was trying to bring your uh your tag your instagram tag back up here but it's uh just at tarpon wt uh, yep. i don't for some reason it's not the program's not letting me bring you back but that's okay so yeah man well, anyone here working it yeah anyone? <laughs> yeah anybody working it anybody can fix this for me we need an uh, it guy I need an IT guy. I thought I was uh, I thought I was a nerdy guy enough, but every week this thing, the system proves me wrong. Um, mm-hmm. the, <laughs> Lee Lee just commented and said, "I'm just trying to go Thank to iCast." <laughs> 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 um, I'll so, actually be there on Friday. 
Okay, awesome. So if anybody is at ICAST on Friday, they can uh, go search the crowd for you. Like if they're searching for a target, yeah, they just go search for Hanson. For sure. For I'm sure. just likely going to be in the Cortland booth or or with the, or the Savage Gear booth. Okay. Um, they're one of those two. Yeah, well, man. I know I'm going to go order me some of those. What are those mullet called again from Savage? Uh, it's the Pulse Tail mullet. Pulse they, they, tail make mullet. It in, they make it in uh, in three different setups. There's actually They actually make it in a, a weedless... Oh, hold on. Let me. I'm gonna bring up your big picture here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. They they make it in weedless form as well. So you know you're fishing over grass and whatnot. You can yeah. you can fish this. They make it with uh, with kind of like a fixed hook. You know that has like a little weight inside already. Uh -huh. And they make it in this line through design, which the line through design is what I like throwing at tarpon. Awesome. And does the size vary on those? That was the question I wanted to ask. Yeah. They, they have a, a six inch and an eight inch version in the line through. Uh, there's a four, uh, a four and a six inch version in the other ones. Cool. Cool. Man, that's mm -hmm. awesome. That's super awesome. Well guys, again, if you've got any last questions, I'm going to give it to Hanson to kind of, if he's got anything he wants to close with or anything we didn't jump, jump into that he wanted to talk about, but if not send over some last questions and then we're going to, we're going to shut it down for the night. Probably. Yeah, man. That sounds like, yeah, a I mean, the only thing I'd like to touch on is just, you know, when you're handling a tarp and just, uh, it's a catch and release fish handle with care. Uh, they are tough fish, but uh, you know the weakest part of the fish is their gills. So where I've made mistakes in the past, I've learned in the present. Um, you know, avoid trying to stick your hands in their gills. If you need to grab a fish, he's got a big lower jaw you can hang on to. Um, and if you're and you feel like you know the flies down there, it's in a difficult spot and you can't grab that fish, it might be better off just to you know wrap the line, break it off. Yeah, yeah. Think about the you know, just think about the fish for a little bit. Yeah, think about the fish, think about the resource, man. I love that. Um, you know, I feel like more and more people in the industry are, are really having that mindset of like, hey, let's take care of this so we can so we can fish it, our, our kids can fish it, our grandkids can fish it. And so uh, exactly. it's definitely important, man. So appreciate it. Man, really appreciate you being on the show, Hans. And I know this is the first time that you and I met. Uh, and so just learned so much about tarpon. I'm like, how do we get to Florida like ASAP and fish with you? That's my next question. Come on down, guys. If anybody wants to sponsor a trip to Florida for Judson and I, we're <laughs> totally going to take that off. We so. just need $10,000 and we'll be able to get down there for two days. So just yeah. let us know. Go fund me or Patreon account or something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah we got to get those set up ASAP. So awesome. Um, I'm trying to see if we have any more questions. It doesn't look like we do. Danny Cerna said, I can't gaff them. And then Jeremy said, uh, you can gaff them in the dorsal. In the oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's the strongest part of the tarpon. Just make sure you have a tar uh, tarpon tag if you're going to do that. Yeah, yeah for real. Perfect. That's the one one more thing, the, the sad thing about North Carolina. And, and I feel like we're a little behind in North Carolina. Or we're a little behind Florida. We're very behind Florida and, and some of the other states. But you can still kill tarpon in North Carolina, and there's a big push right now to um, to end that, and and I think that that is going to be in the near future. But but there's definitely a lot of people that that'll you know hang them on the pier and, and get their picture, and it's yeah. just it's it's silly. It's not a fish you want to eat. It's just sad that people would want to kill them just for a picture. But yeah, that's um, crazy. Heck, we're here to promote you know catch and release on these fish. We're here to try to change the minds. You know, exactly. you're not. You're not going to change everybody's mind, but, you know, and, and some of these old school captains have been doing it forever and that's how they've done it and that's how they're going to keep wanting to do it. But, you know, the customers drive the market. So if we can change the customer's mind and, um, and you know, and make them more conservation conscious mm -hmm. uh, and let them promote that to the captain, maybe that'll help change the captain's mind as well. Yeah, I like it. I like it mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Well, Hanson, awesome. thank you so much for coming on the show. Like Billy was saying, yeah, you want to you, um, you want to do the closing, Billy? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you again, Hanson. I'm going to jump over here to to my camera okay. and close this show. Actually, Judson and I, because we got something to give away here. Oh yeah. You want to hold that up again? This I is, will hold it up. This is something that Judson's mother, Judy Brock, a um, huge She's fan our of the show. Biggest fan. The biggest fan. Uh, painted this like Justin mentioned to her that we were doing a tarpon episode and she came up with this the next day so beautiful picture I'm gonna rent are you want to randomly select one are you on the comments or you yeah, want me I'm to? on the comments I'll scroll back and forth scrolling all around here we go scrolling scrolling I need like a little drum roll right here I just put into the into the sound to the audio let's it's freezing up on me here we go three two it's freezing up on me you pick one okay here we go I'm just gonna roll through them all right Ruby Delgado, hopefully I said your name right. Ruby Delgado. Delgado. Uh, I don't. It's with the D O. 
D E L G A D O. Oh, I like yeah, it. I, I can't like read. It. It's okay. That's well, congrats. You win the tarpon show. picture. Yeah, congrats. You got the tarpon picture. So excited. So just uh, shoot us a message here on Facebook or Instagram. Give us your address. We'll send that out to you. Man, just a great episode, Judson. Awesome Appreciate episode. it again. Thanks for having us in the studio slash your house. And um, we'll see you guys next week. And next week we are we're putting together a show for next week. We had a couple things lined up, and then we're we're kind of on the fence. Are we doing a Mahi show, or are we going to do the inshore? I think uh, Travis is down to do the inshore. But if we yeah, if Travis is down to do the inshore, we're going to have Travis gonna, Overman right. Travis Overman on to talk Perfect. about inshore fishing. Absolutely. So join us next week, eight o'clock Tuesday. Uh, if you couldn't watch the episode live. Uh, well, you're probably not seeing this then, uh, but <laughs> be sure to listen to our podcast anywhere podcast is found. So iTunes, uh, Google Play, Spotify, sometimes uh, as they're in their beta, Stitcher, I, tune in Radio. I think that's it. The yeah, top- and you can even go subscribe to our YouTube channel and check that out. Oh, yeah. I forgot about our YouTube channel. Justin does an amazing <laughs> job uh, keeping up with that. So anyway, guys, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Like, share. Do all those fun things. We appreciate the support. Go to our online store, etcurrent.com. Check out replays and everything on there, as well as purchase your Eastern Current gear. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. Later. See ya. Thank you so much, Hanson.